<laughs> we we got a lot to get into, so let let's get into it. Um, let's do it. This is Heat Check. I'm your boy, John L. This is my guy, Cash Walk In, Matt Price. And Matt, as you alluded to, it is time for the playoffs. Before we get started, question for you the play in is the play in the playoffs, in your opinion? No, no. So you're not in the playoffs if you're in the play in. You're not you're not in the playoffs until you're until you're through the play in. Okay. If you're if you're that that top six doesn't have to play in the play in anymore. That's to me, that's they're waiting for these guys to join in the playoff field. I think the play in I love the play in, but I think that the play in is it's more of a vessel. It's it's a tunnel to the dance. You know what I'm saying? So to speak. I I, I respect that. I've been on the fence about it. Yeah, I've been on the fence about it, but uh, I think it was the Lakers after they won last night. Uh, their social media was like, "We're in the playoffs," and I was like, "Well, now they are." If, if they didn't think they were in the playoffs during the play-in, then I shouldn't. Well, after think they, they were won, either. they're in. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like once they won, they were in. They didn't think they were in the playoffs. Like they're in the play-in. To them, it was a lost season because they don't play with play-ins. They play for championships, and that's it. Because they're spoiled, and that's <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> they're too spoiled. Fair it's enough. crazy. They don't know what it's like to have this grind, this grit. They don't know what it's like to wait for it. Bro, the Lakers haven't been that good. They won the COVID year, and that's about it. Yeah, that's true. But then, then before that, there was like, you know, there was some it was some dark times. They, and if you look around, over those years where they were like bottoming out in the league, they took mm-hmm. some real good draft picks that are like heavy contributors all over the league. With like an exception of Lonzo Ball, who Got he played himself into a big contract, but he just had injury. That's it. Yeah, he's but been hurt. Caruso, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, Julius Rand, like yo, D'Angelo yep. Russell, they brought him back. Yep. You know what I mean? Kyle Kuzma, like their guys, uh, the guys they drafted, if they are they're a franchise known for being like F those draft picks, but they make good picks. So like yeah. keep them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> You make you make a valid point, but again, at, at the end of the day, it's about championships. Like, yeah, they get rid of all the things. <laughs> does that team win a championship? You know, with all the players that you m- just mentioned, you would like to think so. Uh, because if they would have just worked the whole way, into, right? But yeah. yeah, yeah, I feel like but, what they developed into, they could they could have done that together and organically built like your next Laker thing. That's what maybe. people. I mean. I think they got spoiled because Magic came in and just won right away. And then they were just in the championship every year, like as soon as he got drafted. But that's not the NBA player that we're getting anymore. We're getting 18 and 19-year-olds. And, I mean, Magic was like 19, 20, I think, at the time. But you're not getting that very, very, like, refined player anymore from college, you know, that's played against high-level competition and dominated it. You're getting kids who've got high ceilings. It's all it's money, man. Like yeah. there's franchises, owners, they want to see a return on investment. So if they're going to, you know, like they want to see winning immediately. If you're right number now. one overall <laughs> pick, they don't want to see you sit for a year. And, no. You know what I'm saying? Like they want you to come in and contribute. <laughs> and then within right three away. years, they want to see you being competitive in a championship, you know, in the finals, yeah. winning a championship. And it's like, bro, like, that's not the way life works. Like, that's the thing. And, I mean, we're going to get into this team a little bit, but just, like, to touch on it, like, before we get started. Like, the, the what I've been seeing on Twitter today is this Anthony Edwards slander, similar to how I was saying, like, with R.J. Barrett. I'm like, yo, these guys are so, – they're babies. Like, yes, they've yeah. been in the league for three, four years, but they're still only 21 and 22, respectively. And, like, yep. that, they have so much more basketball to play, and they haven't really – played that much basketball yet like yeah it's just crazy they're still yeah. in their developing stages you know their bodies are changing still those guys at that age it's like there's so much left to happen and that's we, can't, thing, we like, can't throw these guys in the garbage yet particularly in the you know I, we're getting a little off topic but anthony yeah, yeah. edwards good topic though yeah anthony edwards i mean they were in the playoffs last year but mm-hmm. playoff and like Playoff basketball is completely different than regular season 
You know what I'm saying? Completely and, and I mean, in, in professional sports in general, like things ratchet up a bit in the playoffs. So like, yeah, like did, do, would we expect him to play better considering the success they had last year? Sure. But he hasn't had a lot of playoff experience. Whereas you're going against LeBron, who's been in the playoffs for <laughs> 20 years. Like he yeah. knows, like, you know what I'm saying? Like he's able to get these guys on the same page know what to expect. Oh, yeah. AD's been there. They won a championship. All like, the intricacies. Yeah, Minnesota. How the refs are going to call it, probably. Yes. How yes. you going to approach everything. Like, he knows all those little all of things it. about the playoffs. And, and it matters. Just, it it matters. Got one it, Ant-Man thinks he's just going out there and hooping still. Yes. Like, it's like, whatever. For him, it's like, oh, this is just basketball. I'm nice. I'm going to go out here and do my thing. And yep. it's just, nah. <laughs> it's nothing. Yep. They, they close out on that jumper faster. They're gonna block. You know, exactly. when, when you drive now, the highlight dunks is gone. They following you in the air. You know, yep. there, there's two, three guys that are gonna jump in front of you on your way to the basket now, or at least hedge at you. You know, there's defensive schemes dedicated. They got 82 games of you, bro, <laughs> on film, <laughs> and now they only gotta play you. So they got, <laughs> so they're yep. going at you like they're gonna scheme to stop you. Yep. That's what man. it is. That's what it is. So we're we're gonna do a deep dive into into the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but before we get into that, prior to the play in, um, <laughs> so tonight it's Wednesday. We got the nine ten matchups tonight. So yes. the playoffs aren't totally set yet, but we have a good idea of what's going on. Right. Um, but in the last week, the Dallas Mavericks were very much in contention to be part of this play-in. Um, right. Ever since the Kyrie trade, they plummeted. I think they were like the four seed, five seed, or something like that. And then they fell all the way out of contention, out of the play-in, and they are currently sitting at home. Um, the big story over the last week is that the the last game, who were they playing that game? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was San Antonio. Okay, so the Mavs had a chance to get into uh, into the play in, and they literally rested everybody. Kyrie everybody. was out. Tim Hardaway Jr. was out. like everybody was out. Luca played briefly, and they pulled him. I think in the first quarter, like seventeen play. minutes or something like that, eleven minutes or something like yeah. that, because it was Slovenia night. Yeah, it, yeah. So he uh, he ends up getting pulled. Yeah, it was San Antonio. Okay, and. Um, yeah, ultimately Dallas loses and they're bumped. They can't get into the playoffs or the play in. Um, the NBA is looking to investigate it because, to the outside anyway, it looks like the Mavs blatantly decided to rest their players so that they would not lose their draft pick to one New York Knicks. Um, yes. What are your thoughts on how that all panned out? Do you think the Mavericks did it intentionally? Nick's bias aside, and what do you think it? What do you think this means to uh, about the franchise, about Mark Cuban, about Luca? What What are your thoughts on all of those things? All of the, exactly. There there are thoughts to be had on all of that because I think first of all, let me start by saying Nick's bias aside. It's very clear that they did that on purpose. Yeah. Like they lost to the league's worst team, 138 to 117 in regulation. Yeah. And, you know, this is a team with two all stars. They sat them and then they proceeded. Like, listen to the starting lineup that they put out there. It was uh, Markeith Morris, Davis Berton, Frank Nilakina, Theo Penson, and uh, what's his name? Jaden Hardy, right? Yeah, Jaden Hardy. All, you know, okay players. But guys who weren't even in their rotation, I'm talking like through the bench. Yeah. Bird Times was like the only one of them who was seeing real minutes. Um, so you play the bottom of your of your rotation, fine. But your guys are healthy, and it's like it just stings more because they were in contention. Now, yeah. moving forward, Luca expressed that he wanted to go. He wanted to go for it. Like to him, like back to the point, is the playoff the play in? No. Arby does the play in the playoff. No. Yep. But it's an opportunity to get to the playoffs where this team was, what, a 60 just last year and made it to the conference finals. Yeah. So you could get hot. You have two of the best players in the world on your team, still gaining chemistry. Go for it. That, mm-hmm. that, you know, that's not the Laker mindset. Like, Lakers fans would have lost their mind had 100%. something like that happen. 
they would have lost it, like a, a full-on tank. But all we had to do was win a couple games to get a chance to get into the playoffs and win a championship. And you're going to take a draft pick over that? So, I mean, look, do they need to find help for Luka? And yes, because the situation with Kyrie, it, it's still in flux. You don't know if he's going to resign. Yeah. You don't know if he even wants to resign. And now you've given up all these assets to Brooklyn in order to acquire him, and it turned into this, now out of the playoffs. Yeah. So they have they have to look to the draft to try to bolster. But Luca, even as young as he is, again, he just came from the conference finals. Exactly. He is ready to win right now. He don't want to do a rebuild like that. So you got to look at all right if they don't, if this draft pick that they get or if they can't parlay this draft pick with somebody else to get another Kristaps Porzingis type trade in there or Kyrie Irving type trade, a yep. running mate with Luca. If they can't uh, turn that pick into that, then you got to look after next year, if especially if Kyrie leaves, Luca is going to be asking to get out of it because he doesn't yeah. want to carry the full load like that. But he also doesn't want you know to be waiting to get back to winning. He's had a lot of success early in his career. Yep, yep. No, I'm I'm totally with you. Was it was intentional? Um, you know, they didn't want to lose that pick to you guys, understandably. But again, it's still they still can. By the way, there's still like a what like an eleven percent chance that. Their pick because it's just the lottery teams are the bottom. What like you, yeah. uh, what ten teams or what? So there's still teams in the play that are going to get mixed in that can still get that tenth pick. And if it goes, is, if they get it. We yeah, get it. that's that's my thing about about uh, the it. NBA is that yeah. it doesn't. It's not the it's not the NFL where if you have the worst record, you get the first pick. You are guaranteed like, that pick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you're just um, raising your chances to get it. Exactly. Exactly. Um. I don't know if I've said it on this show, but I've definitely said it in the past that players don't tank. It's ownership that does. So ownership, somebody up above. I don't know if Mark Cuban was part of that decision or or what, but somebody up in the in the suite said, we are not going to win this game. We're not going to play our, our main guys. And they talked to 100%. the head coach. They, you know, it trickled down and they said, you're going to start this player, that player, this is going to be our starting five. Yeah. The players didn't try to lose. They just aren't top NBA talent to yeah. be able to win an NBA game, regardless of who it is, whether it's San Antonio or otherwise. Um, the players I think, actually hooped. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, they, they're professional. They're professional basketball players, but there's a reason why they don't play. Um, yeah. We don't play as much. You know what I'm saying? So but Theo Pinson had a crazy stat line, a crazy stat line. I'm looking at it. He was he had 23 points, 13 rebounds, and 12 assists. Yeah, <laughs> you see what I mean? Uh, and he shot uh 50 from three, five for 10, 50 from the field, eight for 16. Yeah, so I think this is <laughs> more indicative of what the Mavs front office thinks about Luca. Um, I know people don't want to hear the argument. But Russell Westbrook dragged some terrible teams, OKC teams, to the playoffs. LeBron Ooh. James dragged some terrible teams to the playoffs and into the NBA Finals. Like, is Luka that guy? I don't know. I, I truly don't know. I mean, last year, like you mentioned, Western Conference Finals, I think they had a much better team last year. Um, this year, they had better players maybe like the the top end of their <laughs> roster was better with Kyrie and Luca but I've been on record saying that I don't think Luca's style of play is conducive to winning but at, at this level in the NBA but again as you mentioned he's had a lot of success in in a very short amount of time here in the, yeah. in the states as well as when he was overseas so I don't think it's a situation where Luca Luca wants to win. And I do understand that, especially in today's NBA, you have to have a running mate. So whether that's Kyrie or somebody else, like you have to pair Luca with somebody. But with that said, it almost feels as if, as if they're coddling him. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. instead of going for it, and getting into the play in and potentially getting hot like they did last year and make a run, you're saying, Hey, Luca, we're going to sit you on the bench. We're going to put you on the shelf 
and we're going to save you for next year when we hope to be able to get you somebody else. Like, yeah, he, he's too good. He's too young. Just let yeah. him play. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. I, let I him think, go for it. And again, again, with the success that they had last year, I just don't see why. I don't see why you throttle it back. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Especially when you're not the, guaranteed the getting a win to or to. something. Yeah, it's and that's what I'm saying. It's the it's the the extent they went to for the ultimate payoff at the end. You're playing against a team that is definitely tanking for real. Yeah, and is definitely trying to get women. Yeah, I'm like they're in the running for a generational talent. Like you're gonna have a four percent chance of getting the number one pick. Yeah. They're not gonna get it, yeah. and the, you're you're trying to out tank a team that's tanking in order to do that when you have a chance to get to the playoffs and just go for it this year, if you get the 10 and you lose that game or whatever, then you're right back in the same place. You start a yeah. 4% chance of getting the, the a top 10 pick or wherever you want, right? Yeah. And you make your superstar player happy. He feels happy. Like, hey, we, at least we went for it. At least me and Kyrie had a game. Or he gets in there and he gets hot. And he has one of those Luka stretches where it's 42, 45, 6, and 8. 52 and whatever yeah. and now now you're up 2-1 next thing you know it as uh, as an eight seed on over exactly. Denver. it could have happened it could have happened like they could have just clawed their way up you have two of the best offensive players walking planet earth yeah and you and you you could have made a run at it that is what is a shame and what's worse is that what they did to the fans i had to make sure i mentioned this like i put this in a note in my head what they did to the fans is egregious if you're a dallas mavericks fan you should be upset. You should be writing Mark yeah. Cuban. No, they, or at least give me – I, I want a voucher for a ticket next, next year or whenever this project is done because yeah. you purposely tank in front of all of us. And we paid full price to see Luka and Kyrie. Nobody came there. Yeah, Theo Pinson had played a great game. Nobody came there to see Theo Pinson and Jaden and Jaden Hardy play. They came to see Luka and Kyrie. That's why they played full price. So if that wasn't – you need to get them that back. Especially when they're fully healthy and we're able to go, and then you Very sit true. the entire starting lineup. You really just like no. Nah. Very true. Give the fans their money back or something, or a voucher for next year, or free concessions. I want something. So just to kind of wrap this up, I mean, yeah. ultimately in sports, the goal is to win a championship, and it kind of you kind of backtrack from there. So you want to win a championship, you want to make the playoffs. You want to win your division or your conference. And you know what I'm saying? Like, so like the fact that they so blatantly were like, hey, we don't care about the playoffs. We're already thinking about the future. Again, to your point, the fans of Dallas, the fans of the Mavericks are like, we're here to support you. We want we want to go to the playoffs. We want to see yeah. our team compete in the playoffs. Yeah. And they, They're and they trying took to give you more money. Them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's a shame, man. That's a shame. That's the greatest shame of them all. Of yeah. all of this, you can talk about the competitive side of it and the you know the black eye on the NBA, but it's what the Mavericks specifically did just did to their fans. That's not right. And it was the sellout. They were like top three in attendance this year too. Yes. Yep. So they were doing twenty thousand a night, and what did they get for it? Not even an effort to get into the playoffs. Yeah. Which is why they came all season in the first place. So speaking I, of I'd imagine that there was a lot of excitement around, around there after a conference final run just oh, last absolutely. year. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you gotta get you gotta get them that back. We gotta get so, some back for this. So speaking of strange moves, um the Minnesota Timberwolves had a Yikes. very interesting last weekend. Um we saw um Jesus. <laughs> we saw Jaden uh Jaden McDaniels uh after the game. He's in the tunnel, he's pissed off, he punches a wall, breaks his hand. Um, prior to that, on the sideline during a timeout or whatever, we see Rudy Gobert and <coughs> Kyle Anderson get into it, and Rudy Gobert throws a punch. You know, yeah, it, it he threw a punch. Ooh. Um, following the game, the Timberwolves decide to bench. Rudy Gobert for their play-in game against the Lakers uh, last night, which the Lakers won. Um, we know that we know that Minnesota hasn't been eliminated. They still have a chance to get that eighth seed, but 
what does that situation what does that say about Rudy Gobert? What does it say about that franchise? And do you think they realistically have a chance if they are able to get that eight seed? Do you think they're able to make any noise after, you know, their success of getting in the playoffs last year? I feel like Minnesota like leads in like stupid decisions, like just hundred percent, the stupid things that they they've done over all these years. And, and this is one of the dumber ones, like, and bringing bringing Rudy Gobert there in the first place was dumb. Terrible, but like Terrible. to only suspend him and not Kyle Anderson, you know, who was just as I mean, look, he got pushed or whatever, but there was still re- retaliation. I don't know what the words were said. Rudy didn't just push him out, punch him out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So I don't know what was being said or what that was, but to just suspend Rudy was crazy. And then you no, know, because you either got to do them both or don't do either. And, and, if I was going to do one, I would have taken Kyle Anderson, not for nothing. Yeah, I, I'm just saying, if, if, you know, if I'm trying to preserve, you know, my team. But the Jada McDaniels thing was just crazy. I, I, I you got to have a guy on the bench to keep an eye on this kid. He's going back to the tunnel when the game's not even over yet, and then does that. They're just they're they seem to be unraveling a little bit right now. Now they they put up a, a fight last night. They had that game uh-huh. in, in yeah. the in, in the grass. They they put up a fight, Mike Conley, these guys on a bad night from uh from really the Lakers in general, and then also from uh one of their lead guys, Anthony Edwards. He's yeah. he struggled to get it going last night. And Cat, same thing. You know, Cat, he seems like he's just out of sorts. I don't know what's going He'd on. He'd be with all him. over the place. Yeah, like it's like he had uh he had Austin Reeves on him and he shoots like a step back lean in fader instead of just like yeah. uh or just punish this kid and go get a layup, probably in there one. There was just a couple things that happened in that game that I was just like, man, they gave that game away. And I feel like a tough overtime loss like that, I don't care who it is, New Orleans or Oklahoma City. I got Oklahoma City winning tonight. But whoever get, comes out of that, there's no way that Minnesota's beating them. I don't care. And they're going to have to – I think they have to go to Minnesota too, but I don't care. There's no way. They're, they're, Minnesota's – they're cooked to me. They're cooked. Yeah. They just yeah. – that's it. Yeah, I mean, I think we both mentioned at the time that that trade, I I didn't see how that trade works out. You know what I'm saying? And me personally, I think Rudy Gobert is overrated anyway. Like, he's not a scorer in a league where you need scoring. And, yes, he's a rim protector, but you get him out on the perimeter, he can't stay in front of anybody. So, like, the value, I mean – the value there's not much value there in my opinion especially for what you gave up to get them four um, first round picks so i know every everybody's come out and they've all said the politically correct thing management said it was their decision to sit them um the right. player said that they accepted his apology he like sent a text or something like that and they didn't get a chance to see him <laughs> before they left because they were leaving early in the morning like just on and on and on, like all the PC stuff where it's like, yeah, everything's good. Like, don't worry, you know, he'll be back next game. And I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. They, they definitely put up a valiant effort last night against the Lakers. They absolutely could definitely. have won that game, probably should have won the game. Um, But I think this, it, it, it shows a lot of what they think about Rudy Gobert. I mean, if yeah. that was if that was Anthony Davis, he's not getting suspended by the team. You know what I'm saying? Like no it, it would be different if the league was like, no, we can't have that, you know, Rudy Gobert sitting for a game. This league is team, not. yeah, this is <laughs> yeah, team league, league ain't this is legal, okay. <laughs> you know the management, they I think they're um I think they came out and said, you know, that's not the culture we want here or something like that. And it's like Okay, what culture but do you, you even have over there? You also want a culture of winning. So, like, yeah, you know, I, I'm not gonna jeopardize theoretically one of my better players on the team and hurt yeah. the team. Let them work to, that to, out. to make a point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, why as an organization would you get in the middle of that? Like, yo, this these guys, like coaches can, you know, separate them at the time and stuff, stuff like that and tell them each separate, like, hey, work that out. But that's after that, the players will work that out. They'll talk. They they won't fight again. They'll they'll work yeah. that out. There's no reason to suspend them. And to culture, what is your culture? 
Your yeah. culture today is losing a lot and not making the playoffs. There, there's yeah. – and making bad decisions like this. Rudy Gobert, if there was any reason to jettison four first-round picks and a lot of good players, some of whom, some of whom torched you last night, yep. if there was any reason, it was for that game. To have Rudy yes. Gobert, a rim protector a there, to make things difficult on Anthony Davis and LeBron James, one of the best downhill players we've ever seen. But he has struggled at times against Rudy Gobert. Like, that's why you get him. Yeah. And he wasn't there because you suspended him. Not because Adam Silver said he got to get suspended because you, on your own, sat him out for the game that you probably picked him up to be. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. And, Culture. Yeah. And again, to to that point, we were we mentioned it with with Luca and the Mavs. You want to get to the playoffs. The play in is not the playoffs. So you had a a pristine opportunity to beat the Lakers to become the seventh seed, and instead you suspend a player. You have one player with a broken hand who can't go. And I mean, I I would argue that if he was healthy. And Rudy Gobert was on the court. They win that game going away. And yeah. now they're in a situation where it's going to be win or go home. And um, what happens? What happens if they lose? Uh, you know, you yeah. I know I know they've had a lot of injuries this year, but your hope would be that you're building on the previous year. And it feels like there's a bit of a regression if they cannot secure the eighth seed and at least be competitive against Denver in the first round. I mean, if they lose – if they get knocked out before getting into at least the playoff field, what was this season? Yeah. You know, it, it, again, it, it would be a disappointment for them. And again, they're they not step the, back. It's kind of like how the Knicks did, you know, last year with that step back. They're not going to have – they don't have picks. So yeah. th- this is <laughs> yeah. the team. This, this is, is your team. team. You got to build. You got to so, build with this. And I think Jada McDaniels is a free agent it's coming. I think this is. A, I think he is. He's a free agent this year. I would love that in Madison Square Garden. He played very good when he came. There. He killed us. I would yeah, like it. So we could, we could use wings, and we have a great culture. <laughs> when uh, Julius fights, he makes it up. <laughs> man. You have a debatable culture until James Dolan's out of there. That culture is a little, a little shaky, in my opinion. Bro, you don't even see this guy anymore. You don't even see him anymore. He's at the games, but he sits in like the seventh row, like he's invisible now. We love it. <laughs> he came out. It was the worst thing, like yo, it's crazy because he is the worst owner ever. Like he came out and did like two interviews, and it was like about the facial recognition stuff, and the whole he lit the whole city on fire with nothing but. They were just killing him. Every, they chopped everything he set up. And it was just crazy. He was just giving them. Like, I'm like, what are you yeah. doing, bro? Are you like, are you doing cuts for New York Post? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's, it was like he's doing drop for New York Post. Yeah. It's crazy. If we want to do that, then we can do that. But if you want to come to Madison Square Garden, like, he's, just, he's such a weirdo. <laughs> he doesn't embody what you think a New Yorker is. Fair enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that New Yorker feel like, he embodies like a kid who like inherited money and everything he got his life and didn't have to work for nothing. You know, yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. That don't, that don't, that's not New York. That's not the Knicks to me. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this season, again, we're we're into the play in. We're closing in on the playoffs. Um. Do you have a team that that disappointed you or impressed you? This year, one or the other. Oklahoma City. They're going tonight, and that's the team that most impressed me. Obviously, you know our Sacramento Kings. Most yes. impressive. Uh, Coach of the year, Mike Brown. Like, they didn't give it to him yet, but he's going to get it. Uh, Harrison Barnes played all 82. He's on the all 82 club. Shout yep. out to him. He's a guy who's dealt with some real injuries throughout his career. Former North Carolina Tar Heel. Always be my guy. So, shout out to Harrison Barnes. Malik Monk had got, you know, with the career resurgence. Also, I'm telling you, so somebody told me that this wasn't a hot take, but my hot take for next year was the Orlando Magic being in the field of six in the East next year. I don't know I, who gets bumped from who's there now, they but they are going to be the truth. 
Their much better. Is Markel enough. Fultz. Markel Fultz has found himself again. This yep. is the kid that Philly drafted. Yes. In case y'all was wondering, like, what he was like to see him play that much, that's DMV right there. That's that's that Maryland, Baltimore area, Virginia, all that. And I'm telling you, these these kids can hoop. That's where KD from. He's from that area. Yep. I think he went to DeMatha, yeah. Then he can hoop. And then, uh, yeah, man, those are, those are my biggest ones. OKC, I knew Shea was good. But I didn't know he was this good. Yeah. You know what I mean? I knew he was yeah. going to be a good player, probably, you know, 20, 25 a game was his peak. This dude averaged 32 points a game this year. Like, come on. Yeah. It was I, crazy. Definitely. Um, that was one of my one of my imp- uh, teams that impressed me. I mean, I, we're, we're going to get into that a little bit later. But, yeah, definitely them. Uh, our Sacramento Kings definitely won. Um, I mean, disappointment. I think it's got to be the Mavs, right? Coming off the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. Um, you know, they Mavs. played. They were playing well early in the season they uh, that trade that trade felt weird honestly it you know did, what I'm saying? when they got Kyrie like it seemed forced it it seemed rushed and Panic. yeah yeah they gave up a like lot they weren't even over. that bad they weren't in that bad of shape they were still like six games over 500 yeah that, yeah when they got them and now they ended the season like they just uh it was yeah. bad I, yeah, I I think I think they're the biggest disappointment. If if not just for the fact that they were in the Western Conference Finals, the fact that they were middle of the pack in the West for a while, um, I think because we want to see Luca. We saw what Luca did in yeah. the bubble. We saw him. We saw what he did in the playoffs last year. We know what he's capable of. And the fact again, going going back to the same point. The fact that they didn't even try to get into the play-in to try to get is. into the playoffs is robbing us of Luca in prime time. Luca in That's the playoffs. What it is. So yeah. I think they're my biggest disappointment. Absolutely. I mean, I was gonna say the Nets, but then I caught myself. And I'm like, oh, they're in the playoffs. Yeah. You know, firmly. Yes. They they that trade actually worked out for them. And now they're in line to get any of what now has become a couple of superstar point guards that have apparently come Potentially. available. And Trey and Dame. And then there's going to be free agents out there that are going to want to probably make a trip and at least see what they got going on in Brooklyn. So, you know, they'll get get Ben Simmons off your books somehow. You're going to be in have good to. shape. You have to. <laughs> you got to get them off. Um, Who knows? Maybe it, it, a lot of things can happen. We didn't have this on the show sheet, but Trey Young, I mean, going into the game last night, apparently <laughs> – that Management called, too. yeah, reached out to Trey Young before their play-in game. Or no, there was a story that they were potentially shopping him around, and management had to contact him and be like, "Hey, like that's not true." Um, like the whole the whole situation in Atlanta this year has been nuts. Like Trey Young, nuts. Trey Young has played well. He didn't play great. Uh, got uh, coaches fired. Nate McMillan's gone. There's trade rumors on the day of the play in. Like, is Trey Young yeah. going to be like, do this, do these, this year's playoffs, Trey Young's performance, does okay. that determine that what? Web Jesus Christ. Check it out. Siri is <laughs> killing me today. Yo. Uh, the, you didn't even say her name. She just started no. talking. <laughs> um, it might call for you. <laughs> does. This year's playoff uh, playoffs. Does Trey Young's um, his performance does that have any determination, any bearing on whether or not he plays in Atlanta again next season? So no, I don't think that they're actually. I do believe that they're. I, I do believe that they people are calling and asking. I don't believe they're actually going to move them. I do think that that they will listen to the calls, and it's going to have to be a crazy haul that I don't think people are going to give for a six-foot point guard, uh, albeit a great player and a game changer. Now, I think that he can really absolutely save himself by how he plays in Boston. And sure. the, the Hawks and the Celtics have a, a rich history. They have played each other, uh, like I think, the most times of any Eastern Conference like combination, the Celtics and the Hawks. Really? Like, it's, it's crazy to think that. Yeah, I thought I thought it was a wild stat. But I think they've played. They've met like eight 
like I, I want to say like eighteen times wow. in the playoffs or something like like a, a crazy amount of times. Uh, but they, I think how he plays in this series can can like quiet things down and get them to where they need to be. So if they lose in six or whatever, and he puts on a show and things feel good at the end, I think that they'll feel better moving forward and they'll be able to get back out there and say, okay, we got to just get a couple more pieces, figure out what we're doing with this guy, that guy, John Collins. But, you know, maybe we can package this guy and a couple picks together. We're going to resign Sadiq Bay, things like that, you know, go yeah. – through what they and really evaluate this thing, talk to Quinn Snyder, see if he can actually win with this kid, if he wants to win with this kid, if he thinks he can do it, or is he the head of his lynch mob and it's just going to be like Trey's playing lame duck. I think that was part of the thing yeah. with this report is that maybe Quinn Snyder is the one who's saying, I don't know, he's a, he's a defense first coach, you know, so yeah. I don't know, I don't know if Trey, he's not a defense first player, so I don't know if they've been butted heads or what the situation is, but. We'll have to see how it plays out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I tend to agree with you. I don't think, I don't think he's going to get moved. Um, definitely, uh, I, I can confidently say he's not going to get moved in the off season. I don't think he's going anywhere before the yeah, season starts. Sure. If things get really rocky, maybe before the trade deadline next season. Um, but I don't think anything uh, immediate. Um, the the playoffs. This series against Boston, and again, we'll get into it a little bit later. Um, I do think. I didn't get that. that oh my Can god! You try again? It's because I'm saying series. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus, that's right. I was like, at first, I was like, no, nobody called you, but yeah, yeah you kind of did. <laughs> um, so we'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, yeah, I don't think he's going to get moved before next season. Um, but I think the play again. You want to see growth. You want to see Trey and this right. team build on the success that they've had the last couple of years. And unfortunately, if you see regression, and again, Trey wasn't bad this year, but he wasn't yeah. as good as he has been. And yeah, I feel like teams, franchises, owners, GMs, everybody is so um, nervous about their jobs, about job security, about like any sign of regression, they're talking about making changes, making trades and the whole nine. So um, I'm interested to see how this plan pans out. I think Trey's going to be fine in this series. I don't think they're going to win the series, but um, we'll see. We'll see. It was just you interesting know, going into the playing little... game that, yeah. that that was the discussion. I thought that they were dead and they showed that they were like, they came out with a ton of life. They made it. Uh, it was a nightmare for Miami. Worst yeah. case scenario. Oh, man. And now you got, like, you could have won. And they always got guys banged up. You could have won and sat down until Sunday. Instead, now you got to go and fight for your life. Yeah. 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 And you might have to go to, to, to Toronto. Yes. <laughs> yes. Or it's... no, they got to come back. Or do they got to come to Miami? I wonder. Yeah, they got to uh, come back to Miami. No, they'd have they to come to Miami. Home. Yeah. Okay, so they are yeah, still yeah. home. Good, good. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, so... We are going to get into all the series, um, yes. the games that are set. Uh, but first, I just want to get your thoughts on some of these, some of the bigger awards, um, uh, regular season awards, before we truly get into the playoffs. Uh, and we'll revisit yes. them later on if we need to. Um, MVP. Who do you got winning this year's the 2023 MVP award? I think okay. Embiid did enough. I found this on the web for this year is 2023 <laughs> MVP award. What did I, what did I say that time? What did I say? Uh, I don't think you said series. <laughs> I'm I'm over yeah, it, man. How do I how do I turn this off? <laughs> I don't know. It's AI, man. They don't turn off. <laughs> that's what that's My what fault, they warned man. us about. They warned us about this in iRobot. <laughs> <laughs> they don't turn them off. Um, I got Embiid, man. I think he did enough to win it. I think he did enough to win it, uh, especially even after – I thought he was done after he missed that game with Jokic, with Jokic yeah. but he followed it with a couple 50-point 50, 50 games, I think. And, I mean, he really sealed it. And, it was a, and he had a great win in Boston where he dominated, but you could tell he was banged up. So yeah. it proved, like, all right, I'm not feeling 100%, but I still killed these dudes. Like, give me my trophy. So I think that he, he solidified it with that. 
And you could have made an argument for Tatum. Giannis, obviously, Giannis got the numbers and everything. I think he just missed a few too many games this year, but he was great. Uh, yeah, man, I think it'd be good enough. Give him his first one and shut him up. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think it should be Giannis, but they're not going to give it to him. Um, yeah. But with that said, I, I'm thinking it's in B2. It's really been a two-man race most of the season between him mm. and, and Jokic. And um, <laughs> I was with you. I mean, I thought that game that Embiid didn't play against Joker would really sway me and the media and the fans and the whole nine. But he's played well since then, first and foremost. Secondly, in the games that he has played against the Joker, he's dominated. He dominated. They, his team has more wins. He scored mm. more points. He's rebounded more. Like, I, I don't know what more what more you need to say um to prove that Embiid was the best player this year. If it if it's between the two of them, yeah. Embiid to me is the clear cut winner Definitely. of the MVP this year. Definitely. And I respect the the, the triple double as a center. That is unbelievable. I don't yes. want to take anything away from that. But I just don't think that that takes precedent over the dominance that Joel Embiid, you know, if, if he wasn't scoring so much, he'd have more assists. <laughs> you lead, know what I'm saying? Bro, he's, he's, he's leading, leading the league, league in scoring. scoring. Yeah. 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 You know, so and, and then he's up there in the top five of rebounds and everything. So, I mean, he and, and I think he still is in like a top 20 assists. Like he's, he's like, he averages like six or seven assists. Like he, he's up there. He's, he's doing his thing. So, Joel Embiid, my MVP. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, most improved player, who do you got? Most improved, all right. So it's between there's only two players for me that I'm picking from, and it's Jalen Brunson and Laurie Marketing. I so I want to give it to Brunson because it's my guy and yep. the, 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 what his impact has meant to, to to the Knicks. But yo, none of us knew Laurie Marketing was this That's good. That's a fact. Yo. He really like I knew he could play even in Arizona. Like I knew they, the, I don't even think the Jazz knew that they were getting this player back when that when they got him. This dude made an All Star team this year. He, yep. he was an All Star, yep. and he shot the ball career high uh, at a career high percentages. He put up career numbers. He did everything. I mean, and I mean like when you talk about most improved, like, like he improved all his averages by like wide margins. So I mean he. He proved that they found a guy. They they were they thought that they were going to go and going to have a team that was going to be competing to be a top three draft pick. Instead, they got a franchise player that they could build around that probably fits more with Utah than what Donovan Mitchell did and what they're trying to do out yeah. there because he's a yeah. slow builder player like that who's not like the biggest character, but he's got he's a player that you could build around. So I think that this, they got some good things there, man. Uh, Laurie Marketing, that's what I got for most improved. So I'm going to go with a guy that you mentioned earlier, SGA down in OKC. Oh um, yeah. He's gotten he this year has been a tremendous step in his development. More points, more Seriously? efficient, better from the field. Um his his assist rebound oh, turnover numbers are almost identical as before. So he's scoring more, he's handling the ball more, he's taking more shots, but he's still he's more efficient than he Take has been in ball. years past. Yeah. And when I think improvement, he's improved um, personally as a player. His team is also improved. A uh, plus sixteen wins this year is incredible. And again, plus sixteen, yeah, they're in the play in. They're hoping to get into the playoffs. And if your prediction comes true. They get that eight seed, and they're going to be playing Denver in the first round. So, I, I'm going with SGA. He's been we we knew he was we knew he was good. We knew he had we knew he was talented, but this yeah. year he's really taken it to another level, and that's without without their number one draft pick or their first round draft yeah. pick from this year. So, uh, Chet Holmgren. Yeah, so, had the, this team had the number two draft pick. Yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> yeah, so. Imagine they're, when that they're, comes in. They're going to be a scary team moving forward. Um, so I, I agree. And then they got the Jalen's, the Jalen Williams, and the, those. They got some good young players over there. Yes, they do. Jim Giddy. They, I mean, yo, Lou Dort. They got some good young players over there. Uh, what, now, 
It's time to put it together. This is the way you do it. You build through the draft, folks. Build <laughs> through the draft. Yeah, built built through the draft. And again, getting to the play. I said this about the Bucks when they won a championship. I was like, they're going, they're going to win more championships because a you get a taste for it, and you want another championship. You want more champagne. You want more confetti. You want more parades. But if they're not in a championship, they're going to be so competitive just because they know what to expect. So by OKC, by some of these younger teams just getting into the dance, even if they lose, even if they lose in a gentleman sweep or in six games or whatever, that experience is so invaluable, man. So to take OKC, they get it. They get it. I'm so glad you get it now. Yo, they get into that eight spot and say Denver beats them in five. I guarantee you they're not going to get blown out in all these games. They're going to be competitive. They might lose in five, yeah. but they're going to get so much experience that they're going to be able to build on going to next year. They're going to have Chet back healthy, hopefully. They're yep. going to have a draft pick this year, and it's they're yep. going to build. They're going to build. They have a million draft picks. They have draft That's picks. That's right, yes. Like, they have, like, four draft picks per year until, like, 2027. It's crazy, yo. They have a ton of draft picks. They have Chris Paul trade draft picks. They got yeah. Westbrook trade draft picks. They have so many draft picks. They got Paul George draft picks. Come, yeah. dude, those are coming this year. Draft they, picks. No, you they can have flip it so, for have everything it for somebody. You know, if you want, somebody. I don't know if Dame fits. Yo, Trey. Trey went to school in Oklahoma. They yeah. take the ball off SGA a couple of times, and then, and then or it, it, it it works. I don't know. Look, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, y'all might be able to say I don't know. But okay, y'all might know. okay. See, they're <laughs> they're figuring it out. They're figuring it yeah, out. Yeah, man, good for them. Good for that fan base. That that fan base is rowdy. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, fan yeah. base is rowdy. I like them, and I'm glad that they're gonna get some uh some national TV shine tonight. Yes, yes. Um, sixth man of the year, I've got Emmanuel quickly, and I'll I'll leave it to you, and you can let we've the got know. we've <laughs> got Emmanuel quickly now. I've been seeing some things out there. There's a little Malcolm Brogdon action. Like some of the people with actual votes, the yep. journalists, like they've been tweeting like their their ballots, yep. and they got Brogdon at the top. Somebody put quickly third, and Bobby Portis. Bobby Portis has more starts than quickly, and he's and less of less of everything. <laughs> less everything. He's got more starts, and, and 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 he's not as good off the bench. Look, Emmanuel quickly is the immediate energy. He is exactly what the sixth man is for any team would, would, would want to look for. He comes in, he brings the energy, he's knocking down shots, he's playing defense, he's a he's a, an irritant on defense, he's got long arms, he's in the passing lanes, he's getting the crowd into it. When a game, when you got two guys like Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, these guys are pound the air out of ball guys, things are slow, that can put you, you know, it can frustrate you if it's not going. Sure. When quickly gets up at Madison Square Garden off the bench, I'm telling you, I've been to six, seven games this year. When he gets up and takes the warm ups off, it starts buzzing. Because everybody knows, yo. They know. It's like, oh, and you hear? And he gets in. And he he just be running different. He starts bouncing. And then he crosses somebody up. And it's a floater. Oh, uh, let's go. Come back down. Steal. Boom. Yo, and it's like three minutes in passing. This guy's got his hands all over this game. It's yeah. crazy. Like, he changes the pace. He changes it. Emmanuel quickly, sixth man of the year. That's my guy. I like it. I like it. Emmanuel. Um, defensive player of the year. I've got – so it's probably going to be Triple J, Jaron Jackson Jr. But – I know. I got a good one, though. I have a better one. To me, and it's Giannis, it. man. It's Giannis. Is it's it? Giannis. It's Giannis. I, I got same team, different player. I got so, same team, different player. Who you got, Brooke? Drew. Drew, yo, I love Drew. I love Drew. So and he's played all year, bro. He's played all year, Drew. And he guards everybody's best players. Yes. Yeah. Every time, no matter the position. Yeah. I, I think so. What sucks is I feel like the fact that you're you're saying Drew, legitimate argument. Mm. I've heard Brooke Lopez, legitimate argument. Giannis, obviously. I've also seen Bobby Porter thrown in there a little I bit. I love a defensive team, huh? 
Jesus Christ. I think that's I think that's what's gonna hurt Drew Holiday and and Giannis. Is that they're all so good. They're, yeah, it's you so, got a lot of good defensive. Yeah, players. they're such a great defensive unit that you know you gotta for the defensive player of the year. I feel like you gotta get somebody who stands out. Um, so that's why I think it's gonna be Jaron Jackson Jr. But what a I would turnaround say Giannis. for Brook Lopez. Brook Bro, Lopez was as, so strange, he was a, man. That a whole light thing. Post. He yeah. was a light post as his early in his career, a light post who was a post player, and yes. now he's a defensive player of the year candidate who shoots threes at a three, high clip. Three and D. <laughs> three and D. <laughs> it's, it's nuts, yo. He's. I mean, talk about the swing of the career. Like he literally is upside down. It's wild. We're in the upside down right now dealing yo. with Brook Lopez. <laughs> and there's another one of them out there somewhere. I don't know what team he's on now, but there's another one. <laughs> Man. So you got um so just real quick, MVP, we both got Embiid. Most yeah. improved, I've got SGA. You had who? Marketing. Lori Marketing. Marketing. Six men of the year, Emmanuel quickly, and de- defensive player of the year, same team, different players. I got Giannis, you got Drew Holiday. Uh we'll return to yes, that sir. at we'll some revisit. point. Well, yeah, once uh once they're finally Judas. announced, but yeah, yeah, yeah it'll yeah, be yeah. right before we go on break for the summer. <laughs> um, so the last thing we want to get into is uh I mentioned it earlier, the playoffs are not set. We're still waiting on the eight seeds in both conferences. Uh, we still have some playing games to to get through, but um we can definitely speculate on what those one eight matchups are gonna be, but we can blow through uh, the other ones as well, uh, the other matchups, and just kind of get a, a thought, a feel oh, yeah. for what we think these series are going to end up being. So uh, we're going to start in the East. Uh, the 2-7 matchup, we have Boston versus the aforementioned Atlanta Hawks. Who you got and how many games? I got Boston. Now, it's going to be 6-7 or seven to me. I don't think that they're just going to run them off on a sweep. You know, there's a reason why. Boston, as great as they are, they are heavily reliant on three-point shooting. Yeah. And that is something that, I mean, got, the league average is below half, well, you know, 50%. So mm-hmm. you can have an off night a lot of times, and that can keep guys. Or in, in you're playing the team who's, who could, they're susceptible to have an hot night. They got sure. two players in DeJounte Murray. Uh, Sadiq Bay get hot and start shooting and be flamethrowers. So it's a six or seven game. I'll call it six now, but Celtics and six. Hawks definitely make it interesting. Um, I think Boston's going to make easy work of Atlanta. Um, yeah. I, and, and the crazy thing is I'm not a big Boston fan. Um, mm. I, I just think for some reason, I just feel like there's something missing with that team, like as far as the championship is concerned. But um, I I think they, they make easy work. Um, I'm going to say Boston in a sweep. So oh, wow. Four Boston games. sweep. Get them out, get them out of there. Boston sweep. Um, let's stay with the <sighs> matchups, actually. So we'll stay with the 2-7 yeah, yeah. matchup, but we'll jump over to the West. Uh, we have Memphis, the Grizzlies, and... The Los Angeles Lakers, uh, who won last night in an overtime thriller. Who do you got winning this series and in how many games, Mr. Cash Walken? Look, man, LeBron ain't going out like this. Now that they have let him go in, they they've let him in now. He's he's in the playoffs. And this is when we know that he activates another tier of, of yes. another level of play. So I don't want to say they're gonna win it. But they are not going to be an easy out. And the Grizzlies are a young and dumb team. And let's let's face it, yo, they're they're dealing with real injury issues. Now, John's back. He's good. Bain is good. Uh, Dylan Brooks is good. But Steven Adams is oh, still Steven out. He Adams. won't be there for this game. Yeah. Brandon Clark is not there. So they are really shorthanded in the front court. And I think that Anthony Davis, the way he's playing right now, very, very physical. He seems to be in, in his body for real now. And, and trying to punish people, if he takes that approach with Jared Jackson, and Jared Jackson, a guy who likes to block shots, you, you know, get him in some foul trouble early, you get down to those third, fourth string bigs, and yep. now we could go to work. LeBron's coming downhill. He's at the rim. And, and you know, things can happen. So 
It's all about how Darvin Ham coaches it and how he tries to manipulate this game. Hopefully he can he can do that for them. But I think, it, you know, in, in the series, excuse me, but I think it's going to be uh, Grizzlies in seven. We're going the distance. Grizzlies okay. in seven. I think they do it at home in a close game, but Grizzlies in seven. So this pick is more with my heart than – like facts or metrics or anything <laughs> like that. Um, I'm going Lakers in seven. Uh, in large part, love LeBron. I would like to see him move on. I want to see them be competitive. Um, Lakers have been the best team in the league record-wise uh, since Ooh. the All-Star break. They seem to be hitting their stride. Um, my biggest concern, again, I want to be clear, Lakers in seven. My biggest concern with the Lakers is they are old. Um, LeBron and AD, if they're at Tired. their best, they are going to be the best players on the court. But Memphis is young. They're athletic. And if it gets into a, a track meet where Memphis and Ja, they're up and down the court and LeBron and AD, have, you know, they're having to run a, a bunch I think it wears them down throughout the series yeah. and you know that seventh game Memphis it just might be you know a thing of attrition where Memphis is able to to kind of grind out a, a series win so I'm Could going be. with the Lakers um in seven I, I agree with you I think it's going the distance and um I mean it's easy to say but really it just hinges on how well LeBron and AD play and if their legs are able to hold up through a seven game series in my opinion uh, that's facts. They were getting tired last night. You can yeah. see, like, it's the, this is the craziest part of LeBron's career. Like, us seeing him as, like, a mortal, like, he's getting injured. He gets yep. tired. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> facts. I was like, is he, is he sweating? <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. This, like, he's made it look so easy for so long that it's like, wow, he's tired. <laughs> yeah, fourth, fourth quarter in overtime of that game last night, there was – there were definitely a few shots that he that he left short on the rim, and it's like, yeah, like, bro, you got a lot of you got a lot of wear on them legs. So, um, the miles, man, a yeah, lot of miles up and down them, up and down the NBA so, court, <laughs> and, and and it's understandable. Like, don't don't get me wrong, but at the same time, like, the expectation is championships. Like LeBron, we yeah. want to see LeBron win, cha- or maybe not everybody, but. LeBron win championships. The Lakers win championships. Like, you know, there's no there's no time for for tired legs at this point in the season. None. Um. So let's jump to the three six matchups. Uh. Well, again, we'll start in the East. We have the Philadelphia 76ers taking on the Brooklyn Nets. Um. Who you got? Sixers and five. Sixers, Sixers and five. five. Pretty easily. I think that I think that they're they're as locked in for this ride as I think that anybody on that team has ever been. Now you got Tyrese Maxey playing for future money. Yeah. You got James Harden playing for that one more bag if they got it for him. You know what I mean? Like a one yeah. more long term or three four year deal or whatever. He wants that, and then Joel Embiid is he got all that already? He's playing for legacy. You know, he wants to yeah. get to that, you get to those conference finals, get beyond where they've been in the second round. And I think he's very motivated to do that. You can tell by how he's played and approached this season. Uh, yeah, man, I think they they make easy work on them. Brooklyn really doesn't have anything for Joel Embiid. Nick yeah. Claxton's going to put up an effort, but Embiid is a force, man. Uh, and there's not a lot a lot of guys in the league who can, who can take that type of punishment for that many games straight. Yeah. So, uh, I feel bad for Nick Claxton, but he's about to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. I got Philly in, in five as well. Um, Sixers don't have an excuse. They they have to win this series um, yeah, convincingly, in my opinion. Um, and there's no reason that they shouldn't or can't, quite frankly. Um, yes, Brooklyn's been better than we thought that they would be after the trades of KD and Kyrie. Um, have they been great? No, they've been good enough to not be in the play in or out of the playoffs. So, um, I think there is something to be said about that and I'm with you. I think, you know, 
you you get a hot game from from Brooklyn. They steal a game someplace and um, they get swept out of here in a gentleman's fashion. So I got yeah. Philly in five as well. Tough draw for them though. Tough draw, yeah, absolutely from the third seed. Now, do this. This is your easy play, and then next round is Boston. After that, you gotta do Milwaukee, and then you're gonna have to go through whatever's in the West coming at you. The yeah. tough, tough way to get to it, but they can do it. They're good. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the Western Conference three six matchup, we have our Ooh, Sacramento our. Kings facing the Golden State Warriors. Um. So I think this is going to be the most uh, competitive, most entertaining series of the Me first too. round, personally. Me too. And initially, I was like, Warriors coming off of the championship last year. It's obviously not the same team as last year. Um, Sacramento, you don't get to be the three seed by by accident or by being a fluke. They're a legitimate team. They're a really good team, re- really well-coached team. Um and I, at first, I was like, "Yeah, Sacramento's going to take care of business easy." Um, mm-hmm. They're three and one, or they're one and three against the Warriors this year. So the Warriors have yeah. had their number. Um, all that said, I've got the Kings in six. As what do you I. Got? Same thing, Kings in six. I like them at home. I I forget that I love them at home, especially now in the playoffs. Come on. These people are about to be like they're gonna be inconsolable. Going yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be absolutely insane in there. And I mean it, it should be a pretty good blend too, because there's only this is 80 miles between teams, between yeah. cities. True. So every fans could drive. I mean, this is like a it's like a three hour drive or something like that. It's not that bad from uh San Francisco to Sacramento. So this is I mean, this is like a big time California showdown. I got the Kings though, man. The Warriors. They can't win on the road. They're not the defensive right. team that they've been. And the uh, one thing this Kings team does is they can score the basketball. You know? 100%. They are a sound offensive team. And they don't need your help defensively. And they're going to get a lot of it from Golden State because they don't connect. They're not connecting defensively. Something's missing. Even Clay Thompson in an a, uh, interview with, with the media said, you know, that was one of their keys. They got to stay connected and communicate on defense. And that to me that points out that they haven't been doing it yeah. all season yeah. and he knows it and it's been an issue for them. And I don't expect that to stop. And this is a team that works out of the middle of the floor. They're gonna give it to some bonus, high post, and then these guys are gonna be flying and moving. You gotta switch, you gotta talk, you gotta call yeah. out screens. If you're yeah. not doing that, it's backdoor De'Aaron Fox layup. Backdoor, yeah, uh, you know, Harrison Barnes dunk. You know, flat, you know, guys are gonna be fading out. When you think they're running baseline, fading out wide open quarter threes, you got to communicate the way that this offense it works. I watched them all year, the Kings. They're a high movement offense, a lot of movement off the ball. And Sabonis makes a lot of the decisions. So if you don't communicate, you can't beat them. You can't. Yeah. And I think this Kings and six. Like the beam! <laughs> I'm with you, Kings and six. <laughs> um, so let's jump to the four or five matchups. In the East, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers playing your New York Knicks. Who do you got, Cash? How many games? How is this series going to play out? Knicks is six, and I don't don't care what any of you say. I'm going to give you the real, real numbers. The real numbers, okay? Before you start to try to disrespect my team, I'm going to give you the numbers. We are three and one against Cleveland. This season, three and one, we beat them in their building. We beat them both times in our building. One of the times we held them under our under under ninety points. Excuse me, I think they had eighty nine points, and, mm-hmm. and fourteen travels were called. That was a crazy game. I was there for that. Um, look, the Knicks, they're they're a solid team. They got Julius Randle coming back off of injury, right? But this guy. He's played. He was going for. He was going to be playing eighty-two games this year. He played all eighty-two last. Like the dude is an Iron Man. I fully expect him to be back and conditioned and ready to go. He works his butt off, and I know that's what he's all about. I expect him to give me what, or close to what he's given me all season. But the keys in this matchup for both teams, uh, if either of them want to win, are not the big names. For Cleveland, it's not Donovan Mitchell. 
it's the Karis Leverts. It's the Evan Mobley's. For the Knicks, it's not, it's Mitchell Robinson staying out of foul trouble. It's Quentin Grimes and him quickly being able to knock down those open threes. R.J. Barrett. What R.J. Barrett are we going to get? Are we going to get, high, you know, kind of disappearing in, in the big moments, R.J., where he has 11 and you don't know? Or am I going to get R.J. Barrett, who's high efficiency, you know, taking this, you know, taking what, what the defense gives him, and you look up and he's got 25, and you don't even know how, what happened, you know, how it even got there in the Knicks to win it. So that's what it's all about, man. It's about these – It's Jalen Brunson, they're going to – we talked about the playoff series and how coaches – they have the, all the film. The Cavs have the film from all four games. They're going to take Brunson away. They're going to close that paint to Julius Randle. When those guys kick out to R.J. Barrett, to Quentin Grimes, to Josh Hart, to all these guys, Emmanuel quickly, they got to make those shots. That is where this series is going to be turned on. Okay. Okay. Nixon six. Nixon six. So. So. I know you believe it. You believe. <laughs> you gotta know, say it though. I, I wanna hear you, that dirty mouth say it. <laughs> I know you you've been critical of Julius Randle this year at certain points this year. I have. I and, have. And I mean, rightly so. But he had a great, great season. Yeah, a yeah. Great season. no, he played well. And I do think him being back and being healthy is going to be a big part of this series. Um is he healthy? Have they said anything, or is he just so, the plan it, is it was like he, back? March, March 29th was the day he got hurt, okay? He was to be re- – that was a Wednesday. It was Wednesday, March 29th. We are on Wednesday, April 12th. That, they, he was to be reevaluated in two weeks. It is two weeks today. Mm-hmm. So they, they've they been talking about all week. They've talked – Mike Green get, uh, put on his podcast. They're targeting game one for him to return. They they mm-hmm. already reevaluated it with you know pending any aggravations or anything like that. I mean it, he's been nonstop treatment. He didn't go on the road trip with them when they went out to Indiana and all so like he stayed and got treatment. He's been training. He's been hitting the weights, doing his thing. You know he's a worker. That's what that and I I I give him that credit. So look, he's the tough shot maker. Like this is his style of game. You would think that a player like him would love half court slow take all the time in a possession, like, that's your regular game. Like, go out and do it. He's a tough shot maker. Go out and do what you got to do. I just want him to make the right reads, make the right decisions. Don't turn the ball over. Don't force it because you have teammates you can trust now. That's what's different than a couple years ago. He didn't feel like he kicked that thing out. Now he's got guys who can kick out to that he can trust. He knows he's going to knock those shots in. So I'm looking at my notes. I had Cleveland in six. And actually what I had here, Cleveland in six. But if Julius Randle is healthy, I have the Knicks in six. So if you're telling me, if you're telling me Julius Randle, if you're telling me that he's going to be healthy, I'm going to switch my pick. You made a very convincing argument, my friend. I'm going to go go. Knicks in six. Let's go. Let's go. For the first round of Next the playoffs six. against Cleveland. Look, man, it's a lot. Evan Mobley, he's still wet. What, what do they call it? Wet behind the ears or whatever. Still very young. <laughs> he's like yeah. 198 pounds, maybe 202. Julius Randle is a grown man. He is going to – it's one, one thing to take that one game and then you keep it pushing to Chicago to play against Vucevic. We ain't going to be doing that to you. It's yeah. another thing that I'm going to give it to you tonight, shoulders to your chest. Then you got to come back a couple of days from now, shoulders to your chest, elbows to your ribs, all the spin, like all that. And every time, like he's going to be like, switch with me, Jared. Like, switch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't yeah. want to guard him no more. He's crazy. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. That that punishment. These guys are new to the playoffs. They were they got knocked yeah. out last year. Yeah. Cleveland, right? Weren't they in the play-in? And then they, they got knocked out of the play-in. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. look, this is their first time. And the last time that Donovan Mitchell was in the playoffs, he's seen a familiar face that we got on our side now who outplayed him in, 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 when he was in Dallas, and that's Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson. Don't forget, man, Luka was out, and Jalen yep. Brunson took it to Utah when they, when they went yes, out there. Yes, he did. So don't forget. And then just a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, we went out there to Cleveland, 
We'll test their game. No Julius Randle. And Brunson went for 40-plus on a night where Donovan Mitchell had 40. So, yep. look, man, the stars are coming. I can't wait to see it. Move me to Saturday already. Like, just fast forward there. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm so ready. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Um, and we have one more 4-5 matchup in the West. It's the Phoenix this is Suns be a great one. versus this is gonna the be so great. Clippers. Who do you got? Do we know the status of Paul George yet? I don't know if we've gotten any updates, but he still like, is. Is he going to be back playing. during this series? Because I feel like the first round is like three weeks long. You know what it I mean? Does, the first if you round can push it to five, long. six games, yeah, because like every game, like if you, game ones are Saturday, and then for some people, their game two is not until like Wednesday. <laughs> like It's crazy. They have a lot of days in between because on the weekdays, they only play like two or three games. Yeah. Where on, on the weekends, they have four. So okay, I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna go with Phoenix, but yo, the way that Kawhi's been playing, things are starting to come. The, the Clippers had a little, a, a little spat on the sideline too. So I'm, yes, I don't know did. what the vibes is like over there too with uh, Bones Highland and uh, my Plum, or Mason Plumley, two new players. They're <laughs> so, fine. I mean, I guess they're cool. The vibes are what they are over there. But hey, look, Kevin Durant, man. They're they're basically undefeated since he got there. Yep. He's just too good. He's too smooth. Excuse me. And then him and Book is just a lot to overcome offensively. The health. If they're healthy, I got the Suns. Suns and <sighs> Kawhi gonna make this thing interesting. I think that I think this one goes seven. Suns and seven. Seven, man. I got the Suns Yo, in a sweep. So Phoenix Suns got those depth, man. Yeah. Suns in a sweep. Get them out of here. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I just okay. took a look. Uh, Paul George, the last report I see is he's out for the start of the series. So uh, Get him out of here. <laughs> I figured that's at least the first game, probably the first two games. Um, Kawhi's been incredible. Like, don't, don't let me yeah. try to spin this any other way. He's been great. That team – that team is good. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and again, their record yeah, yeah. would would indicate it. Um, Phoenix, th- uh, that team, they don't have the depth. You mentioned it. They don't have the depth. But when the four of them are rolling, you throw Chris Paul in there, you throw DeAndre Ayton in there, there's, the not, mu- there's not much you can do offensively or defensively to keep up yeah. with that team. And so, I think they're actually, all prepared to play big minutes too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm with you. As long as they stay healthy, I, I think the I think Phoenix just they take care of business. Um, potentially, I could see it go. I, honestly, I could see it going six, but uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna say Phoenix and four. Suns and four. Suns and four. <laughs> Suns and four. I love it. Like if, um, the, if the Clippers do get swept. What was this experience? Like, what was, what is, what do we say? Like, what was that? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, um, that would be a bad thing. They cannot get swept. I, yeah. I understand that's their prediction, but I'm just saying that cannot happen. No, but, I, I got you. I mean, for Mr. Bomber's sake, man. Yeah. What a waste yeah. of funds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I could have found a better way to waste that kind of money. <laughs> that's very true. Um, yeah, and again, I'm I'm saying Suns and four. I, I can absolutely see see it going six. I could see it going seven. Um, regardless, I think the Sun win the series. Um, I think at the very least, the Clippers do need to be competitive. Um, yeah, yeah. they're opening up their new arena. You know, uh, this experiment as you mentioned, is I, I, I truly don't know if it's going to work out. I mean, they wanted to get out of the shadow of Big Brother and, and the Lakers, but it doesn't really seem like it's going to pan out that way, you know? So yeah. um, we'll we'll see. We'll see how it goes, but I don't think they get out of the first round personally. We'll um, see. And then, that is pretty cool, though, that they got their own arena now. They needed that. They needed it a long time ago. 
Um, yeah, I can't they, believe they were doing that because Donald Sterling and uh and Jerry Buss were like homies. They like party together and stuff all the time. Yeah, so like they, it was like, oh yeah, I'll just put my just, you know put my team up here and we'll play in your gym. <laughs> they should have tried to do that during like that Lob City era. They they would have had that place packed out. Packed. Um, packed. and the only series that we haven't touched on are the one eight series mainly because. Uh, we don't know we what don't they're know gonna be yet. But um I'll no, no fight will be put up from any team that makes it. Whoever wins in the in the nine tens or whatever, whoever makes it. So you think wh- whoever the one Sweeps. eight see one eight matchup Sweeps. should be sweeps on both sides. Right. I wish I could show you my phone right now. I have Bucks and four, Denver and four. It doesn't matter who they play. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter who they play. <laughs> the Bucks are too good, man. I'm mad because if the Knicks do get this Knicks and six, that's all, folks. I'm not gonna sit here and say that we could do that. I mean, <laughs> I, I, well, I'm unwell, but I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> again, you know what I, I'm and, and to again to kind of wrap everything up. Actually, hold on. Let, let's just go through this real quick. Um, so, Boston, uh, Boston, Atlanta. What was your pick? I got a uh, Boston in. I, I got Boston in six. I got Boston in a sweep. Memphis Lakers. Uh, you had Memphis in seven. I had Lakers yeah. in seven. Yeah. Uh, three six matchup. Philly versus Brooklyn. I had Philly I had in, five. in five. Yeah, I had six and five. Kings Warriors. I got the Kings in six. We both had Kings in six. Uh, Cleveland Knicks. I switched Knicks my and pick. six. Knicks went, and six. I went to the Knicks as well. I went to the Knicks as well. He brought me to the dark side. Uh, and then Phoenix and the Clippers. I got the Suns in a sweep. And you have I got I got I got the Suns in six. And six. Oh no, did I say seven? I said, oh, I said six. Oh, did I say seven? I think I said seven because Kawhi makes it interesting. Okay. Did I say six or seven? So, I don't remember, honestly. You don't got it written down? It. No, I didn't write it down. I thought oh. you did. I thought you were recording <laughs> my, it as I went. My I, fault, I, man. <laughs> I remember it, but I, I'm looking. I'm looking at the uh, at the, the bracket though. But yeah, I, mark me down officially as, as Suns and Six. All right, Suns and Six officially. I like the and Six then, game. And then the the Bucks and Denver. We got them both sweeping. Whoever comes into that AC. supermarket sweeps. <laughs> so um before we get out of here um shoot i forgot what i wanted to ask you now um <laughs> so we got playoff basketball tonight um going into the weekend or play in basketball tonight playoff uh, playoff light playoff light play, playoff <laughs> light uh who do you got winning tonight tonight I got Toronto, and I got uh, Oklahoma City. An and upset, right, but not an upset. And right now, Toronto is up. We actually got to give we got to give to the TV to get these games on. But the Raptors are up right yeah, now. Yeah, no, I got it on. I got it on the background. <laughs> um, I got the Bulls winning tonight. I got them beating the Raptors, and I I also have the Thunder. Um. The Pelican. I mean, I'm so sick of the Pelican Pelicans. I I think earlier in the year yeah. I I was high on them when Zion was playing. They were like the four seed, three seed at one point. They were out um, to two. They were yeah. They were like a game out of at the, the first spot. Yeah, man. They they get on my nerves, man. In January, up until January, they were a game out of. They were a game behind Denver. They were a game out of the one seed when Zion got hurt. That's Un- that's exactly Un- so. Whatever it is mentally now, I hate hearing that. Whatever it is mentally, Zion needs to round that corner and get his mind back on the floor and doing what he does, what he knows he can do. What I, he needs to get over that. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. But we have a lot of basketball yes. uh, this weekend, the upcoming week. Uh, the best time of year, quite frankly. So make I sure you it, tune in. We definitely will. Like I said, we got to get to this Toronto Chicago game. Um, but anything before we get out of here, Cash? Let's go next. I ain't saying nothing else. I ain't saying nothing else. I like it's it. Prove it time. 
I like it. Let's go next. Again, I'm your host, John L. This is my guy, Cash Walking, Matt Price. This is Heat Check Powered by Designated Report. And we will talk to y'all next week. Enjoy the playoff basketball. Yes, sir. Peace, God. <laughs>